I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right? This is Brother Shemgar. Um, I just felt it on my, uh, felt it on my spirit to come out with, a, uh, just with another video, man. You know, brothers is back home from Passover. You know, some brothers are still out, you know, in other states, you know, uh, you know, finishing up with, you know, what they had going. Uh, but, you know, brothers are getting, getting back home. You know, uh, we did the Passat. It's back to business. You know what I'm saying? Right. And now, you know, for those of us who, who truly took that, the Passat serious, man. Right. And purging out that leaven from our from 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 um from our spirits, you know what I'm saying, you know, and also from our, our from our homes as well, right? It's time to buckle down, right? Our kingdom is nigh at hand, man, right? So this is the time to put forth all your strength, all your might. If you haven't been doing it, this is your time, man. This is your time to shine. Go 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 and go forth and put forth everything you got to seek out the wisdom, man. Don't let the words that brothers was talking at Passover or just, you know, when you when you are amongst brothers and having great camaraderie, don't let those words just be vain talk or, or, or just just that, just words. Let them let them come forth into fruition and be actions, man, that you see that you see fit to to uh, uh, put forward uh, to, to, to bring in forth the uh, 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 our mighty kingdom, man. Right. Actions that the most high uses. Right to to further uh, the, the the destruction of this uh this this, this wicked ass society Babylon and the furthering of our society man but we gotta continue to be diligent and fight the good fight you gotta buckle down whatever it is that was what the Basak was also about too whatever it is things that was holding you back from doing the work man Th things that was just you know holding holding you back from increasing the spirit purge that shit out man you should have already done that. So that way, when you come back and you and you home now, it's time to go hard, man. It's time to get real serious and austere and be stern and, you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, um, real diligent with the scripts, man, right, to be increasing because we got to put forth that, that effort. We got to fight this good fight if you want to be one of the ones that make it and endure to the end, man. Like, I came home and I, and I watched this movie. It's called The Book of Eli, man. All right, many brothers seen it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what. I was just flip. I had something to eat. I was flipping through, you know, uh, movies that I wanted to just watch real quick, you know, as I fall asleep or just relax. And, you know, Spirit had it where I clicked on that joint. And I watched it several times, but just seeing it through the, through the eyes that I see now, that the most high is just, you know, the wisdom that the most high is giving me now, I'm just like, damn, yo, it's cool. You know, he had a mission, right? The brother had a mission. And along that mission, it was many trials and tribulations. The Most High, of course, for those who've seen the movie, the brother had to deliver the the, the scriptures to this one uh, so-called, uh, you know, like this, well, this one Edomite uh, who was, uh, you know, writing the scriptures down and then was going to make a copy and give it back out to the world and whatnot, which is BS. But the point is, he had a mission to do that was ordained, right, uh, 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 from, uh, from before he was even born, man, right? So... He had to do that mission. And along that mission, there was many trials and tribulations. People tried to kill him. People tried to distract him. There was many times where he could have got distracted, right? But he endured. He fought the good fight. You see what I'm saying? And at the end of the movie, what happened? The brother passed away. But the Lord sustained him enough to go ahead and see fit to do what it is that the Lord required of him. So the Lord gave you all the utensils, everything that you need and, and, and the necessities that you need 
to go see fit that you go ahead and push this truth and do his will, man. Right? So stop, stop, stop saying that. Oh, I need to do this. I need to get this in error first, and I need to do this, and I need to do that. And then I can see fit to focus wholeheartedly on the Lord, man. No. You know what I'm saying? You should have been doing that. Right? But if you haven't, and the Lord is still supping with you, man, he's still giving you that spirit to believe, don't waste it. He had mercy on you, man. Right? So what the point is, the Lord could have just teleported him to the one spot that he wanted him to go to. And give the uh, the Edomite bull the, the, the message. And the movie would have been over. But that's the point, man. The Lord is the director. This is his movie, man. He could make it easy for but what, 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 what good would that do for us, man? Will we learn anything? Will we become better sons if everything's just handed to us? So expect trials and tribulations, right? So I ain't going to talk too much, but I'm going to just hop right into the scripts now. Cause I could, you know, I could, I could keep going on and on. All right, Second Timothy chapter four, verse five. Right, it says, "But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry." So the point, right? The description is saying you gotta endure your afflictions. Yes, the Most High is set and ordained for you to go see fit that you push this truth to the four corners of the earth. All right, you have not chosen him, but he has yet chose you. You know what I'm saying? He or danger, he plucked you out of the world to go to go push this truth, right? So endure it. This is a high calling, man. Right? The highest calling there is. Do the work of an evangelist, right? Make full proof of thy ministry. Go teach your people, man. Be watchmen to the nation of Israel. So watch and pray, man. Right? Hasten the hasten the day, man. Right. Verse six, for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Right. So this is what we praying for, man. We praying for that day where we could go back up to the spiritual world. I know I am. I don't want none of this, man. And everything that the Lord gave me, I'm thankful for it. But what I truly desire, my heart's desire is to be back with, with my heavenly father, man, you know, and to be ruling in the kingdom, you know, for my people to be at one with our creator, man. Right. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, man. That's my heart's desire for us to be nigh with, with, with Yahweh, man. Keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, that New Testament. That's what I desire, man. Not this place. I don't care about the riches here, man. I would give it all up to do the will of the Heavenly Father, go back up to the spiritual world, and, you know, uh, uh, well, Salaki, Salaki, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me rephrase that. I want to be the 144, right? And I want Yahweh to come and, and, and you know, uh, Yahweh to send Yahweh Shai and have the, the angels, the, the host of heaven and Yahweh Shai come and deliver me up, man, and, and, and beam us up, put us in our new bodies and then put us in the kingdom, man. That's what I desire, right? I desire that, man. Just to be at one. You should desire that too. Verse seven, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's what I desire, man. Right? To just fight a good fight while I am here. That's what I desire as well. To fight a good fight. But you can desire, but you also got to put forth the effort to also do it. Right? I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I want, I, I want to do that. That's what we're required to do, man. You have to fight the good fit. Uh, fight the good fight. And a part of that is adore, enduring the temptations that come upon you, right? I want to be that cat at the end that went through everything I, the Lord required that I had to go through, and I stayed faithful. So part of that is doing what you have to do now. You see what I'm saying? Why should the Lord choose you to stay faithful always to the end if you ain't doing shit now? He's just going to call it, it, it. The scriptures talk about that. Revelation 3 and 16, he's going to spew you out of his mouth, man. You being lukewarm, you're not profitable, right? Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 5, right? The, the unprofitable branches are going to be broken off, man. You're, 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 you're meat for nothing, unprofitable. You see what I'm saying? So that's the point, man. You have to be profitable. You have to fight the good fight in this thing. This can't be reiterated enough. You can't go over this enough. You have to be diligent, man. Verse 7. So like at verse eight, 
Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. That's what's laid up for us. A crown of righteousness at the end of all this. As long as you stay faithful, man. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. So look, man, that's the point, man. The Lord, he is laying up a crown for us. An incorruptible crown. One that does not pass or fade away. Incorruptible. Unlike the one that, 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 that you gain here from fame and glory in this world. You see what I'm saying? That's the corruptible crown. Right? This is what we this is what we fighting for. This is why you putting forth all your effort so that way you can endure the good fight so you can get that crown and everything that comes with it, man. One one of us shall be a thousand. Right? Do you know what that's gonna look like? You having all them children, your castles, I said castles, your chariots, right? All your wives, all your children, right? The Lord using you in that mighty way to bring back the nation of Israel in a righteous, in a righteous, uh, 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 in a righteous manner. You understand? That's what we fighting for. So don't lose sight of that. Don't lose sight of that at all, man. See what I'm saying? So let me grab the next script. Come on. I'm going to go ahead and grab Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. Galatians 6 and, uh, it's like it, not, not that. Well, I could use that scripture too. Yeah, all right, let me go ahead. Let me start at 8. Galatians 6 and 8. For he that sold to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sold to his spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So if you constantly, you know, feed into your flesh, man, right? Instead of studying, instead of reading, instead of praying, you, you know, doing whatever it is you want to do, Right? Enjoying and just enjoying your so called life, right? Instead of doing the will of the Heavenly Father, you gonna reap you gonna reap corruption. Because the way we are made, we are designed to sow into our spirit, man. And then when that spirit's not there, you're you're you 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 literally become a a a walking zombie, man. We are designed to feed our spirit, man. Because once you start feeding it and they get used to eating, you can't make it go hungry. You will die, man. You understand? It's just like that's the feeling. That's the best way I could describe that feeling. You just feel like you're going to die if you don't feed that spirit. This is why we got to constantly nourish it with the right things, man. With the scriptures, with praying, with fasting, studying, man. Doing the will of the Heavenly Father. These are the things that you have to feed your spirit with, and you will reap life everlasting when you sow into your spirit. And it's not easy. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well doing. That's that's well doing, man. When you when you when you when you sow into your spirit. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So if you don't faint, why you constantly enduring this? This BS in the world, man. When you're enduring it, if you don't faint, man, you're going to be blessed. You see what I'm saying? You're going to reap your reward in due season, man. That's the point. So you got to continue to fight. Don't grow weary, even though sometimes it go, you, you get tired. Life beats you up. Watching the book of Eli, man. The cat, man, he was tired. You know, he's a little beaten up, but he kept going. That's the point. He kept going, yo. He didn't say, woe is me. Why would you choose me? Why didn't you make it easier? No, he took everything that came along with it. He was a man. He was a man. And I understand we talk about a fictional character, right? But I'm I'm just saying, I'm just using this. Because, you know, Jake, we love, you know, we love pictures and movies and videos and we can you know it's something that you can relate to right because we all we, we don't watch this movie he was a man he endured that's what that's what we have to do we got to constantly be diligent and endure no one told us it was going to be easy and if they did they lied 
right? But this is why we're this is why we are fighting, man. This is exactly why. Let me grab another preset for you. Proverbs twelve and twenty four. Proverbs chapter twelve, verse twenty four. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be uh so so shall be under tribute. All right. I ain't even gonna get it. Uh, I was going. I get it. Uh, I was gonna get it under the blue letter, just so you can see. All right. I don't want nobody feeling like I take my word for stuff. I just don't be wanting to uh, go ahead and grab stuff sometimes. You know, all these notifications be popping up. You see what I'm talking about? So, got the word for tribute. I'm about to go back here. Read this. Read the field. So, Proverbs 12 and 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. So, when you're diligent, you're going to bear rule, man. You see what I'm saying? You're going to be in rulership because you endured until the end. You kept the uh, you kept fighting the good fight of faith. You endured, right? And he that endured from to the end, the same shall be saved, right? And what's our salvation? Being free from our enemies, like it says in the book uh, uh, the book of Luke. You know what I'm saying? Luke uh, Luke one. Right, being saved from our enemies, and we're and then like it says in Isaiah fourteen, we're gonna rule over our oppressors, man. Though the same that oppressed us, we're gonna oppress them, man. Right, and they're gonna bring their riches unto us, and and, and, and we're gonna have the fatness of the earth. Right, it says the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. But when you slothful, man, you're gonna be under tribute. Let's see what tribute says. Right, it says. Gang or body of forced laborers, task workers, all right. So you're not you're not the one ruling. You're the one put. You know you're you're the one under tribute, right? Like like if you had, if you got a job, you're the one under tribute. The person that 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 owns the job, he bears the rule. You understand what I'm saying? You know uh, to put it in a carnal sense. When you constantly putting in that work, what's gonna happen? You know what I'm saying? Eventually, you're going to reap the benefits of it, right? You're going to own your company, you know, da da da, da. You're going to have all the money, this and that, right? I'm talking about carnal stuff, right? Now, the person that that's slothful doesn't want to get up to go to work, put in that extra stuff on his side business and do that and save his money. What's going to happen? You're going to be under trip. You're going to be working for the rest of your life, right? So apply that back to the scriptures, right? When you're constantly doing the work of the Lord, right, what are you going to do? You're going to bear rule. You're going to be one of 144,000 as long as you be diligent and endure until the end, right? But if you're not, you're being like these niggas out in the world or you have the truth, right? But you sit on it. you like that lazy servant, right, who buried his talent in the ground. What's going to happen? You're going to be a two-third. You ain't going to be ruling. Yeah, you're going to be blessed, but you ain't going to be ruling. And that's the spot you're going to have for eternity, man, Right? I don't know about you, but I want to be 144,000 for eternity, man. You see what I'm saying? That spot you're working for now, you got a short amount of time to put in this work to secure your spot for eternity, man. Either be the two third, the one third, or the one forty four. Which which will it be for you? Ask yourself this day, man. All right? Look what it say: slave gang, force sir. You know, right? Uh, so basically, just you know. In this particular scripture, it's basically talking about, you know, the 144 or the, you know, <clears throat> or, you know, uh, the 130. And then you can also apply this scripture to other things as well. But the point is, right, the, the way I'm applying this scripture is talking about, are you trying to be a 144 or a two-third? You see what I'm saying? For you sisters, are you trying to be a one-third or a two-third? You see what I'm saying? So that's the point, man. You got you to gotta be diligent in this thing. You got to constantly fight. So let me give Proverbs 13 and 4. The soul of the slugger desireth and hath nothing. So the soul of the slugger, him that's not diligent, that's the opposite of being diligent, you being a slugger, you always desiring stuff because you don't got shit. Why? Because you don't work for it. You're always desiring wisdom, but you never get it. Why? Because you don't pray for it. You don't put in the work to get it, right? Or, or let's say you're praying for it, but you don't, pray no, you, you don't put in the work to try to get the wisdom. You don't try to put in the work to get the knowledge, to understand it, right? But you see everybody else with it and you want it. But you ain't putting forth the effort to go get it, man. It says, but the soul of diligence shall be made fat. Now, in this sense, what is it talking about, right? 
I'm applying it into a way where, yeah, you're going to be made fat with the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, faith, discipline, diligence. You're going to have all the good, you know, uh, profitable things of, uh, you know, uh, uh, of a profitable servant, man. Right. But if you're a slothful sluggard, man, what's going to happen? You're not going to have none of that. And you're going to desire it, but you ain't going to get it because you ain't being diligent and putting in that work. And that's what's required of us, man. We got to do that. All right. Let me get this. Second Timothy 2, uh, 2 and 15. Second Timothy 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto the most high. So, yeah, you desiring that wisdom. You desiring that knowledge and understanding. You desire. That's the one thing that a slothful man always desires. He, des he desires, but he never has. Now, it's one thing for us, uh, uh, for, for a righteous man to desire stuff. You know what I'm saying? But... The difference between the righteous man and that slugger or that diligent man and that slugger is the diligent man puts in the damn, he puts in the work to get it. The slothful man has, they both have desires, but who going to get it? The diligent or the slothful? The diligent man, yo. So study to show thyself approved unto the most high. Not tell a man. I don't give a damn about proving myself to a man. I want to prove myself to a most high. A man ain't going to get me through Jacob's trouble. It's to the most high. So study to show thyself approve unto the most high and show him that, man, you want this thing, man. Why he going to give you something if you're not putting forth the effort to show that you don't want it, man? Why? Why would he wait? This is the highest calling in, 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 in the world, man. Why, why, why are he going to see fit to go give you something that you're not even putting forth the effort to go and get, man? And take time out of your day to show that him that this is important to you, man. Put in the time. Put in the work, man. Right. Like it says, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, a workman. Right. So me, I'm a tradesman. Right. Now, if I do a specific job. Right. When I do a specific job and I know I do it well, I don't care who come in and look at it, because you know why? I know I did the best that I uh, uh, that I knew how to do on that job. And I knew I did. It. I, I know I did it well. I know I did it well. I took the time. I was diligent. You know what I'm saying? I made sure I looked at every minute detail. So that way, when somebody come and looks at that thing, I'm not going to be ashamed for them to come to look at it. Or I'm going to be able to go ahead and, you know, uh, uh, break it down properly if I have to teach somebody else it. Right. Because I know that I done studied this thing. You see what I'm saying? I know I slock it. I know I done studied this thing so well. I done know this trade so well that if I got to go ahead and teach it to somebody, I know for a fact I ain't going to tell them nothing wrong. You see what I'm saying? Because I done studied this thing. I'm good at this tree, right? The same with the scriptures. We done studied this thing. We know the ins and outs of the truth. We know the scriptures. So you can't confound us, right? So when we when we when we when we teach the truth, we're divide properly dividing the word of truth, right? So 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study and show thyself approved unto the most high, uh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So that's the point, man. You know, you have to study no matter what it is you do, your trade or this truth, man, or whatever you're trying to do. You got to study. Right. You can't you can't if you if you assist it, you can't make oils or sugar scrubs. You know, what I'm saying to, uh, uh, be, uh, uh, to the, the best you can if you ain't study how to make them. Right. You're going to do it half ass and they're going to rub that sugar scrub on a on your face on a on, 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 on your face and they're going to say, what the hell is this? Right. Or you can't break it down to somebody else on how to make something if you ain't study or or, or, or or figure it out yourself, right? So that's the point, man. Let me get one last preset for y'all. I'm going to grab this joint in the uh, GNC. Not so like it. Uh, what am I talking about? The blue letter. All right, Philippians 3 and 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the uh, of the high calling of Yahweh and Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. So this is the highest calling, right? This is the highest calling one can have. The scriptures just said it, man. You see what I'm saying? So I press towards the mark. Let me look up what the word mark means. Mark, scopos, right? An observer, a watchman. Right, the distant mark looked at the goal or end one has in view. 
So the, the, the mark that this particular scripture is talking about, right, is talking about what? You being a watchman, you being an observer, you doing the will and work of the Heavenly Father. I press towards the goal, man, right? And how you going to get that goal? By being diligent. It ties back into the lesson. You see what I'm saying? Right? This is the highest calling. Continue to press towards that mark that you see at the end, that goal that you see at, at, at the end, that end that you have in view, which is the kingdom, right? Everlasting rulership, thrones and scepters, glory. You see what I'm saying? Those are the things you are pressing towards, right? And we got to stay vigilant, disciplined, and diligent, man, right? So let me read that scripture one more time, right? <clears throat> so like here. I press towards the mark for the prize of a high of the high calling of Yahweh and Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. So that's the point, man. This is the highest calling one can ever have in this earth. Is to be a priest and prophet of the most high God, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, man. All right. So that's the highest calling. So for you Akim and you Akwakim, whatever it is in your walk. You stay diligent, man. You hold fast and you and you stay down and you do this thing to the best of your ability. Stay fervent. Stay on fire. Stay in the spirit. The Lord is watching. Study to show thyself approved unto the most high. Right? And stay sincere in this thing. So with that, I want to say, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shabbat, Rakatah, Shalom.